Okay, back to the vintage air. Uh, some of this stuff we did yesterday. Lift the va evaporator unit up under the dashboard. Secure loosely using the 1 quarter 20 bolt which I converted to a stud and washer. To ensure proper drainage it's very important that the evaporator is level both right left and fore aft. Check for level on the flat positions of the case around the drain. So I don't know what you do about that if it isn't level and what if the car is not sitting level. But at any rate it looks level. I may check that later. Using a 14 by 3 quarter sheet metal screw secure the front evaporator mounting bracket in the inner cowl by aligning the right hole in the front evaporator mounting bracket with the OEM hole in the inner cowl. Um, there was no OEM hole and this instruction goes against what it said about using the um, the template to to drill that hole but at any rate I used the holes I drilled it says to secure the left side of the front mounting bracket with the evaporator mounting bracket in place Drill a 3 16th inch hole in the inner cowl using the left mounting bracket hole as a guide. That was done with the template. Secure the bracket to inner cowl using a 14 by 3 quarter sheet metal screw. And I did that on both of those. And, you know, again, these instructions are not very consistent or clear. Verify the evaporator unit is level and square to the dash, then tighten the mounting bolts. Tighten the bolt on the firewall first, then tighten the mounting bracket screws. Well, I don't know, but if those things are loose and you tighten them, that might just um, make it out of level. So anyways, I'm marking a check mark for all those things. Don't have a good level here with me. Uh, worst case scenario, before I put the dash back on, I can check it. And if I need to, maybe I can put washers under the mounting brackets. But on the other hand, if it's level in the other direction and you need to shorten that, I don't know what you would do because there's nothing, no adjustment available. Just my opinion. Okay. I, this is all stuff that was done. Then it says, in line with the drain, lightly mark, make a mark on the firewall, measure one inch down, and drill a 5 8 inch hole through the firewall. Install the drain hose to the bottom of the evaporator unit and route through the firewall. So I don't have a good 3 8 inch, or I'm sorry, 5 8 inch drill bit down here nor do I have one up the house so that's going to have to wait but it looks like you could do that anytime <clears throat> and it says put the firewall cover on since that's out in the outside. I'm going to skip that for now. I want to get the interior back together because that will get me uh, more room in my shop here. 
Okay, and it's talking about the compressor hoses, etc. Those go all in the engine compartment. I'm not going to do those yet. I want to get the inside back together. This is under final steps. This is what is necessary for the inside. Using the supplied tie wraps and a 10 by 3 quarter sheet metal screw, install the driver's side louver adapter assembly as shown in figure 21, which is right there. see where the sheet metal screw goes. It's got a thing there. Maybe it's there. It doesn't point to it. So install the duct hoses as shown in figure 22, page 22. And it says to reinstall the center dash assembly. Reinstall the control panel assembly refer to control panel instructions I can't do that yet because I don't have dash in there, or console in there da, da, da. The, I know that I've seen here it is control panel and duct hose routing so There's the control panel wire. It gives you lengths of these hoses. But I have a little bit of problem with this in terms of the directions because what they give you is one big chunk of hose and the hose is expandable so I don't know whether I'm supposed to expand these hoses and then measure them or do I Expand it. So this is what they give you. Suppose I can try to measure the whole thing and see if it's possible to cut it. And they don't tell you how to cut it. loss of as to what to do here all of this is this has to be done before you put the center panel in I'm sure because this has to go behind it these have to connect to something. So I'm going to have to study this some more and figure out how I'm going to attack it. So this took me a long time to figure out. It says using the supplied tie wraps and a 10 by 3 quarter sheet metal screw Install the driver's side louver adapter assembly as shown in figure 21. 
which is that. It says use the tie wraps to raise and secure the louver adapter assembly. And then install the step two, install the duct hoses as shown in figure 22, page 22. Okay, they never told you to put the driver's side dashboard back in place, but, okay, this, I assume, goes to the driver's side louver adapter. This goes to the driver's side right louver, and it says that's a two inch tube, 12 inches long, which I was wondering why I got two pieces of tube. This is the two inch tube. They say to use 12 inches, but what I figured out took me a long time, but from that picture, you gotta get the right socket for this. From that picture, it's hard to tell that this is where they're telling you to put that screw in. Now they do have a very slight line. I couldn't see it with the Uh, I couldn't see it holding the, the picture out far enough from the camera, but there is a little line to right there. Okay, and the way I figured this out is this looked to me like where the bottom of the steering column cover bolts on. And that is why I figured this goes here like that and this screw It was on there. Seems to make sense to me now. But the next part is a little confusing because it seems to indicate that you need 12 inches of tubing between that and the they don't even say what this is but it's a diverter it's to have it go to both sides of the, um, the driver dashboard and they also say 12 inches of the 2 inch tubing here. Well, 12 inches of that pulled out might fit in there when you compress it. That's the piece. And it says the flow goes that way, so this, the way I'm looking at it now, this is 
backwards because they're looking at the front. I'm looking at it the back. But what I'm going by, the flow appears to be on the high end. If you look at the picture, the high end of the thing. So the flow is going that way. So that would have to point to the mover here. So this must sit further back. I have 12 inches of tube here and 12 inches of the 2 inch tube here. But again, I don't know which way to measure it. And I don't know if I can even put this in without putting the dash in first. But at least now, I kind of know how it goes. I feel my next issue is going to be getting these hoses around these fittings because I'm working up under the dashboard doing it. That's going to be a treat. They don't give you any kind of direction on what might help you get those on there. I feel like with these ridges that are on here, if you can get them on, they're not going to come off. But this one is oval shaped. And it calls for this size hose. So it's got to be bent up around there somehow. Maybe you have to twist it on, like screw it on, get it behind that spring. But again, I still don't know what size of what length of hose to cut. But like I said, 12 inches of hose between here and here seems like a lot, as, as does between here and here. So this is going to, and on the other side of this, it says uh, 10 inches of hose. So that raises another question. Before I start putting all this stuff on, it would seem like maybe it's a good idea to put these on and this stuff before I put that, because I think it's going to be a, a challenge to get those on there. So I got this two inch hose on this oval fitting over here. And the way I did it was kind of risky, is I pulled this end spring over the edge and then I twisted it. Well that's kind of okay for here, but what happens when you have a piece like this that gets connected to that and to that? And you can't twist both of those because if you twist this one on, 
then you can't twist that way, and if you twist this one on, you can't twist that way. I haven't cut this yet because I want to make sure. somewhere a tack puller that I was hoping I could get under the lip but I cannot find it right now I have to search for it so after thinking about it for a while I decided that the last place I used my tack puller was to separate those clips underneath the uh, dash pad Enough, it was still up there. Let's see if I can get this under here and stretch these around. This is not going to be an easy task. Wow. that those aren't going to fall off easily. But I'm trying to envision what I'm going to do when I'm up underneath the car, the dash, and trying to pull those on. I think I can build it out here, take this and this off, and the whole assembly will come off. But then, and I think it might, then I could put the dash in and probably be able to work those in there while they're connected and screw them on. But the other part of that is then you've got to connect it on the other side. And that could be a problem. So I think I'm going to I'm looking at these lengths and they want 12 inches between here and this. 12 inches between here and that, and that's got to be 12 inches expanded, in my opinion, because even that would give you a lot of wiggle room. I don't know how much 12 inches will compress. You know, what's the compressed length? versus the expanded length. But I think it'd be easier to put these back up. Those aren't hard to reach from the dash. It's just a matter of getting this up in there with everything else that's up under there. And they show you putting it on with the dash in place as near as I can tell. 
So I guess that's what I'm going to do. I hope I'm doing the right thing. So I need to measure it. As I said, I'm going to take that off. Measure about 12 inches. It's hard to even measure this stuff. I'm leaving that part connected down there. Like I said, I may disconnect it to install the dash, but so there's about a foot. I'm going to cut it right there. I'll start by cutting the wire. And then and go around that. If I do it right, and follow the look to be about equal length. I wonder if I should I wonder which one I should use. Which one's going to be harder? They are roughly 12 inches each. Which one's going to be harder to get off and back on? came off easy. I gotta make sure this high end is pointing that way when I'm done. But Time, I can twist it and just line it up when I'm done. Good grief. I don't think this project is for the faint of heart. with this underneath there. Maybe after I do a couple I'll get the knack of it, but and off the bat. It doesn't seem to be a good easy way.
maybe when you're working with ones that are mounted, it's easier. You can always hope for that. Maybe I started with the wrong end. Maybe I should have taken the other end off. But now I'd still have to put this end on. able to get fingers on both sides of this and pull it and it went on. So now I need to twist it so that it faces that way. And I need 12 inches of the long tube to go between there and there. So I'll be measuring that out and some of that. This appears heavier than the other. So I'm going to cut it about there. careful with this knife. I've stabbed myself once today already. Not on this, but... Piece of cake. Okay, let's see what we can do here. This has to be pulled that way. By the way, that's not wire inside there, it's plastic. I was surprised. To, part of it was visible when I was uncurling that. Okay. 
Oh, I turned it the wrong direction. And it popped off. I had it started. Oh, this is frustrating. Sure, if Vintage Air put out a video, they would make this look easy. I will say this, it, it's so tight that once it gets on, I'm not really worried about it falling off. Because I think it'll be on there to stay. Jeez. thought that pushing it on with your fingers was going to be the trick, but this one's not proving to be easy. And unfortunately, there's a couple more, including underneath the dash, that are these oval style, and I think they're slightly harder than the Try getting the other end and just pulling the It's on, but the problem I have is the way I got it on was by rotating it. And like I said, once you get over here, chances of rotating it are gone because if you rotate it one way, it'll pull the other side off. Let's see if we can start the loose end and then it's kind of trying it on that piece, but start the loose end and then just go around it and pull it up. So close. Okay, that seems to be on. Like I said, they're so tight once they get on, I'm, I'm not afraid of them falling off.
Now I hope there's room behind there to fit that. Like I said, I'm going to try putting this all together and taking it off, putting the dashboard in and now I need a 10 inch side for the driver's side it goes on to here and then that goes on to the unit underneath question is is it going to be easier to mount it underneath underneath is a oval This one's round. Okay, I'm going to shut the camera off for a bit and think. Okay, I did find a better way of cutting it. Once I started it with the knife, I was able to get scissors in there. wondering if I was on the right side of the coil that I am. So there's the 10 inch section that I need to attach to that. Question is do I attach here first? And I think I'm going to try this one on here first. The reason is, at least on the one underneath, I have the somewhat advantage of it's not going to move, it's solidly in place, and so all I'm dealing with is the um, the hose. Again, I'm so close. Like a sixteenth of an inch away getting this thing on here. The disadvantage to doing it under the dash and attaching it to the evaporator unit is your access is going to be what it is. You can't turn it around like I can this. working to my advantage. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I just ripped it off the other side. this side go on easy. Guess you have to watch how much you're putting pressure on. Even though those are tight, they can come off. Maybe this is stretched a little bit already and I can get it on easier the second time.
Tell you what, this part is not fun. So those are on. Got the high part going out like it's supposed to be. The one that's more toward the middle is coming in. So I guess I'm going to take this off and go install the dashboard. Really not fun. I guess I might as well record taking it off. Okay. There's your pan head screw, your number eight, three quarter inch pan head screw. kind of screw they said to put here but uh, there was one already in the dashboard here so I used it I gotta think something else screwed to that I don't know what I may find out whenever we put it together as usual I'm gonna put that screw back where it came from I don't want to lose it. So I kind of have a sub assembly that hopefully will go in fairly easy once I get the dash in. So, and when I get this in, I can tell you right off the bat, I am not connecting this first because you got to reach behind it to do this one. I'll do this one which goes over to the passenger side. Uh, get that at least this end of it all connected and then I'll do the back one here front one. Well, I'll do the front ones after the back ones. It's, I don't know which order I'll do them in. So I'm going to set the camera up. Hopefully you'll be able to see something from the install of the dash. I'm going to try to see how this fits. One of the things that could be a problem is this may be in the way of putting the steering column in. So it's technically possible that I can't go much further with this until that happens, which is not until after the body's on the car for good. But I'm going to try to see if I can even get it up there because... That's got to cross. Now maybe I can stick the steering column. Maybe I can stick the steering column in above it with it in place. But 
I really don't know. But he has to take this back down once it's up. out of the 74 and out of this car and gosh it just seems like it was easy Take this screw out that was holding it on. Almost couldn't get it in there. Should have been more careful about where I left that pipe or that tubing or whatever you want to call it, the flexible stuff. Because now we've got it wrapped around in there. Press it enough to get it where I need it. I think 12 inches of this tube is way too much. 10 inches, whatever they recommended. Because it's going to be totally compressed, I believe. the part that's got to go on the evaporator unit. This has to hook up to the bottom of the dash here. I just need to 
you get a screwdriver up in there, I think it went into place. wiring out of the way. Uh, I hope that's long enough to reach to where I'm going to put my relay because Those amount of hoses they tell you you need are very, very, very generous. I don't even know if I can compress it enough. Get it on there. I don't think I can. I think I'm going to have to take that off and cut it and struggle to put that back on. It clearly is far too much. Far, 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 far too much. But like I said, I think I can stab the steering wheel through because I don't have any uh, I don't have any seats or anything. I can take it back as far as I need to to get the shaft down there. Like I said, fully compressing both of these, this 12 inch piece and the 10 inch piece they told you to put on. And I'm, gosh, it's about three, four inches too long, fully compressed, as much as I can compress it. It's absolutely. Ridiculous. Since these expand, I'm, I'm going to say I can cut these things in half, both of them. Which leads me to wonder if 
What am I to do with the other pieces? this so much easier if they had just given you a hard ducts like the original. And it's not like you can even cheat and just ram two of them together because the connections don't match. Some of them are round, some of them are oblong. And that's what you would have to jam together. So you have to have a flexible piece of hose in between those. There's no getting around it. So I'm going to yank that tube off. I'm not going to do that on camera since you won't be able to see much anyways, but this really is a disappointment. So I guess there's no point in uh, taking these off of here and here. I'm just going to cut this in half because when this gets in there, well, you know what? I'm going to go measure the distance between the main unit and the um, the piece that goes to the dash vent. So the distance between the evaporator unit and that hard vent that I was trying to put on and I measured from the place where it would bottom out if it was totally on to the other. The total distance is about eight and three quarters inches. So you're talking that much has to go in that area. Now I feel this can be shortened too but I don't know how much. Uh, I'm going to shorten it a little bit, but these things, if this is a total of 10 inches from here to here, that would be more than enough. But I'm going to do them about in half just because that's what it. seems to want to be. And I forgot to bring my cutting pliers. Maybe I can do it with these. Just going to Make sure I'm cutting it the right direction. If I stay on this side and go around, no, I gotta go this way. Because of the spiral. take about half of this one off. I'll still be over that eight and a half inches. Eight and 
three quarters inches. So extended, that gives me over a foot. So that should fill up eight and three quarters inches easily. Now this one, I think, can be shortened, but not that much. Now I do have enough to duplicate this again if I need to, if I cut it too short. So I'll live dangerously. That points to the outside. This goes to the main unit. This goes here. Let's see if I can get that on easily. Ha ha. Trying to do this reaching around that dashboard and around that unit. It's not going to be fun. Okay, I'm trying to get two of the plastic springs over the retainers. And I think that's it. So
I am not going to try to put that on, though, until I get a piece on the back uh, output of that evaporator unit because pretty confined working area and I think what I might try to do is not cut this until I get it on there then decide how much I need because the next piece going from the back loops around and goes to a solid connector in the middle and then goes to the passenger side vent so I don't know you know they're telling me I need 20 inches but based on what I've seen with this first piece that I've tried um, a little skeptical so I think I am gonna do that I'm gonna try and stick this on and then once I determine how much I need, uh, perhaps then cut it to size. <laughs>